The Weird Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. again the immortal tale, the oblong box. There, Captain. There she is. And me your glass. Aye. Five aboard. Very well, turn about. We'll drop line and take them on. Aye, isn't it? Stand by the mainsail! Long boat sighted, Norrie! Right lines on up! You make out what ship she's from? Uh, uh, too far, Captain. She's American, though. Aye. Uh, now we'll soon be on them. Mate, if the captain's with them, send him up to my cabin. Aye, aye, sir. Take him to the main soul. Easy now, don't run him under! He too! That's about all, Captain. We'd been at sea in the longboat for two days when you sighted us. Just about done in. My friend here, Mr. Allen, was the only passenger to survive. You say you're from the packet ship Independence, eh? Aye. Uh, what cargo were you carrying? Uh, cotton, a little hemp, and some timber. I see. And that was all? Aye. Did you happen to pass some drift, Captain? We did. Nothing you just spoke of. Uh, would you care for a little more grog, gentlemen? Oh, thank you. And you, sir? Yes. Yes, please. No, we passed nothing adrift that you mentioned, but um, we did hoist aboard something rather strange, you might say. It may not have come from your ship, though. Could only make out the port of embarkation and the date. Charleston, South Carolina. August the 2nd, 1881. That was our port. That was our date of sailing. Captain, what was it you took aboard? Two bodies. Passengers, I suppose. A man and a woman. Rather unusual, though. The woman was in a coffin. Uh, an oblong box. You seem startled, Mr. Allen. I, I am. And the man? That's the strange part. He was lashed to the coffin by an inch-thick rope. Oh. Uh, from your reaction, Mr. Allen, I presume... Um, I presume you know something about the box? Yes, I... I'm afraid so. Uh, then, Mr. Allen, uh, uh, suppose you relate the entire story. Very well. To tell you the truth, Captain, I had intended telling no one. You see, as Captain Hardy told you, the dead man had been a friend of mine. I'd hoped the, the sea would keep its dead. The man whose body you found tied to that oblong box was an artist from New York. His name was Cornelius Wyatt. As I remember, Wyatt had been married only a few months when I met him quite by accident. It was at our port of sailing, Charleston. I'd been on board only a few minutes when I heard his voice calling me by my first name. I was quite surprised to see my old friend. Edgar! Edgar! Alan, hello there. Wyatt! Why, heavens, man! How are you? Oh, it's good to see you. How long has it been? Oh, a good year since I saw you last, at least. Now, let's see. Yes, since 1877. Of all the places to meet you. Now, uh, tell me, Wyatt, is your wife aboard? My wife? Well, yes. 
Good. More people have raved about her astounding beauty to me than I could possibly count. <laughs> I've sworn to see her with my own eyes. Where is she? Uh, I'm sorry, Edgar. I'm afraid that would be impossible. You see, she's she's ill in her cabin. Oh, what a shame. Well, then, later, I'm sure you... No, no, no. Really, I think she'll remain in bed for the rest of the trip. Her health wouldn't permit it. Oh, come, Wyatt. You wouldn't cheat me of this chance to meet your beautiful wife. The sea will do her good. Or is it because you're jealous of such beauty? Huh? Please keep that remarks to yourself. My wife's appearance should be of no concern to you. Oh, but, Wyatt, I was only joking. I, I meant no harm. Your humor is not appreciated, Mr. Allen. Well, forgive me. I assure you I meant no harm. I beg pardon, sir. You, Mr. Wyatt? Yes, uh, is that there box of yours? You're having it shipped in the hold? Confound it, man. How many times must I give these instructions? My cabin, you understand? It must be put in my cabin. Must I tell the captain himself? Sorry, sir, but there's hardly any room for such a large box in your I cabin. don't care how little room there is. That box will go into my cabin if I have to move it there myself. Well, sir. Sorry, sir. Confound it, fools. Must I beg them to carry out my instructions? Is... Is that the box? Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Allen. The clumsy fools may drop it. I'd better watch them. I'll see you later. Although at the time I was surprised by my friend's sudden outburst, I passed it off to temperament. After all, he was an artist. At the moment, I was more concerned over the... the oblong box than over my friend. It bothered me quite a bit. I couldn't find a reason for his being so overwrought over the placement of a cumbersome large wooden box. And furthermore, I couldn't find a reason for his use of one that shape. It was about six feet long and two and a half feet wide. To me, its contents were a mystery. At first, I excused it as containing a number of his precious paintings. About three days out of Charleston, I met Wyatt again. He was walking about the deck. As I approached him, he cordially offered me his hand. Hello there. Hello, Wyatt. Uh, Edgar, I... I believe I owe you an apology. An apology? Yes, you... You must forgive the way I acted the day before we sailed. I... I'm not as well as I should be. Oh, think nothing of it. Here, let, let's sit here. That's it. I... I'm under a severe strain, Edgar. Perhaps I should tell you... You are my friend. I, I should tell someone. Well, of course. What others have told you about my wife is true. She is beautiful. Very beautiful. I'm afraid, too beautiful. Yes. I was one of many, many suitors. I was the fortunate one. Why, I don't know. She doesn't love me, Edgar. Are you sure she doesn't love you? Yes, I'm sure. Very sure. Since I've been married, she's done her utmost to make me jealous... She knows how I worship her beauty. She knows her power. Men have always loved her for it. They still do. I know it, Edgar. I'm suffering because of it. There are men today who, who would give anything for my wife's hand. Anything. She knows it. She taunts me with it continuously. The way she looks at me, laughs at me. You're in love with her? Desperately. You'd never give her up? Never. And she knows this? Of course. That's why she taunts me. Well, perhaps if I could see her... No, 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 no. She's... she's still ill. Ill. Oh, I'm sorry. This trip. You know why I'm going to Canada? Do you know why? Paintings? I'm taking her away. Away from all those men. She'll learn to love me. I'll make her. I'll keep her beauty for myself. Well, perhaps... Perhaps this is an extreme. Extreme? No. No, it's the only thing to do. You don't know the torture I've suffered. Well... Well, let's talk no more about it. I... I feel better now. As you wish. You will keep my confidence? Oh, without question. Now, how's your painting coming, Wyatt? I haven't touched a brush in months. But the canvases you brought aboard, weren't they yours? Canvases? I suppose they were in the large box you have in your cabin. Why do you suppose that? Well, because of its unusual size. That and... box doesn't concern you. It's none of your business. I didn't say that I... Don't ever mention that box again. I forbid you. You hear? Don't ever mention that box again. Perhaps I've been too hasty, Captain. Perhaps the man just isn't well physically. By the box, it could contain something unimportant. I think I was overly curious, that's all. I, I've known him for a long while, you know. He's always appeared perfectly normal before. And everything's been all right lately? 
For the past few days, yes. He's been perfectly cordial. And I think perhaps it's best we pass over the entire matter. There's probably some logical, uh, some simple story behind what's happened. Uh, yeah. More port? Uh, no. No, no, thanks. I think it's best I be getting back to my cabin. Looks as though there's an unhealthy storm brewing along the coast. I'd best get back. Oh, I noticed it getting a little rough. Will it hit us? I can't tell yet. Well, good night, Mr. Allen. Perhaps you'll join me at dinner tomorrow night, eh? Uh, thank you, Captain. I'd be... Listen. What? Shh. I thought I heard... Listen. Again? Nothing. I... I hear nothing. The wind, that's all. The events have made you a little nervous, I suppose. No, wait. I'm sure I heard something strange. Groaning or something from out there. I'll open the door. It's probably the ship's cat. Captain, here, quickly! The passageway's black. The steward probably took the lantern to... Listen. Again. Hear it? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. It came from the darkness down there to the end of the passageway. Well, somebody's in trouble. Who has the safe room at the end of the passageway? I think Wyatt. The first two are empty. Well, come along. Pull your cabin door closed. I'll get a lamp. The darkness... No, will... no, I know my way. We may need the darkness. Very well. Uh, stay close. The uh, first two, you say, are empty? Yes. And this one, you believe, is Wyatt's? It should be. I'll stand here a moment. I'll listen again. A knocking. Tapping. I'll try this latch. I'll open it as quietly as possible. There's no light under the door. Uh, stand back. Easy now. What? Blast it. It's locked from the inside. Well, someone is definitely in there. I am going to knock. Now listen closely. Someone is in there. You heard it? Hello in there. Is that you, Wyatt? This is Alan. Anything wrong? Hello there. No answer. I don't like this. Open the door, Wyatt. It's the ship's captain. I'll be forced to break in. Here, help me. Help me as I count three. Go on. One, two. Ready now? Three! <laughs> Where are you, Wyatt? Wait. There's a lantern by the port. I'll strike a light. Stand here and... Empty. The room is Empty. stood there in the gloom of Wyatt's cabin. We were sure somebody had been there but a moment before. We'd heard them. And now the cabin was apparently empty. The door had been locked from the inside. Nobody could have left the room without our seeing them. Then suddenly Captain Hardy pointed to the right wall of the cabin. There in the dimness of the gloomy shadows. Alan, this cabin and the one beside it are adjoined. Now, let me get the light and see if the adjoining door has been opened. Whoever left, left in a hurry. Here. Here, Alan. Give me a hand. I can't reach the lantern. Boop. Blast it! Hardy! Uh, all right. All right. Just stumbled over this blasted box. Uh, my hand. The oblong box. Excuse me, gentlemen. I didn't mean to intrude. Quiet! May I come in? There's another lamp on the table. Allow me, Captain Hardy. But where did you come from? How did you get into the passageway there. when... There. The... That's better. Mr. Allen, I have been walking my wife on deck. May I introduce you? Oh, you may come in, Marjorie. Marjorie, this is Mr. Allen, the man who desired to meet you so much, and the captain of this vessel... Captain Hardy. How do you do? How do you do? And now, gentlemen, may I ask the reason for your uh, breaking in? I, uh, we heard a noise, a cry. We thought it was from your cabin. That would have been impossible. 
There was nobody there. Are you sure? We heard... Of course I'm sure. There was no one here, I tell you. And now, gentlemen, if you don't mind... Uh, Wyatt, before we go... Yes, Mr. Allen? Ask your wife to... to remove her veil. Marjorie, would you please oblige the gentleman? My wife, Mr. Allen. Your... your wife? But I... She is beautiful, isn't she? I... Uh, yes. Yes, she is. You, too, seem stunned. Quite. Yes, quite. Um, uh, Captain Hardy, come. Uh, thank you, Wyatt. One moment, uh, Captain Hardy. Yes? Would it be too much to ask for a new cabin door? This one seems to have suffered slightly. I'll, uh, I'll see to it. Good night, gentlemen. Hurry. To my cabin. His wife. Did you see his wife? Yes. She was hideous. His rave about her beauty. Why, he's mad, Captain. Hopelessly mad. She was horribly ugly. Yet... Yet she was familiar. I've seen her before. I... I know it. Where? Where? Did you notice the door leading to the adjoining cabin? No. It was open slightly. Someone could have left Wyatt's cabin and reached the passageway through the empty one next to it. Hardy. Yes? Your hand, huh? Covered with blood. Well, you must have cut it yourself when you when you fell. Here, let me wash it off. No. No, it isn't cut. Yes, but that blood. It isn't mine. Well, then where did you... The oblong box, Mr. Allen. The oblong box. What was behind this terrible mystery, neither of us knew. We would inform the police as soon as we put to port. From then on, I saw nothing of Wyatt. Two days passed since the incident in his cabin. And on the second day, Captain Hardy warned all the passengers of what was in store for us. We were forbidden on deck, confined to our cabins. We were being blown out to sea by a furious hurricane wind. On the fateful night, I was lying fully clothed on my bed... The sea was sickening. The ship was yawing terribly with each plunge. I was expecting the worst at any moment. Then suddenly, above the roar of the terrible gale, I heard a strange sound coming from the passageway before my cabin. I was a little bewildered at first. For a few moments, I sat there on my bed, wondering. And then... Edgar! Edgar! This is Wyatt! Do you hear me? What is it? I need your help, Edgar. I need your help. Go back to your cabin, Wyatt. You hear? Get out of the passageway. It's dangerous. The ship may... Please. Please open the door. You must. You must help me. You're my friend, Edgar. Please. Very well. What? Good heavens. My box. I've got to get it on deck. I've got to. The ship may break in two at any moment. Please. Please help me. I can't manage it alone. Please. Well, you must be completely insane. The storm is too high. It's, it's suicide, I tell you. You'll be blown overboard. Just to the door. You don't have to go on deck. I have some rope. I'll lash myself to the stays. I'll be safe. Please. Yes, but your wife. You can't leave your wife alone now. Go back to her. Snap out Just of it. Just up the stairs. Please, Edgar. You're my friend. Please, Edgar, please. Very well. To the top of the stairs. The, the, the other end. Take, take the other end. That's it. Go on. I have it. Hurry, it's heavy. All right. Here. This way. Up these stairs. I've got it. Here. Don't drop it, Edgar. Don't drop it. All right. All right. All right. A little further, Edgar. Just a little further. Now. There. Oh. This is as far as I go. Oh, thank you, Edgar. Thank you. You don't know what this means. No. Go back to your cabin. I can't. I, I must get my box on deck. Then I leave. No, no, please. One other favor. Hold this hatch while I push the box out. I beg you, Wyatt. Use your head. The water will swamp us. Listen to it. Please, Edgar, please. Well, then, stand back. I'll open the hatch. I'm not responsible for you, you fool. Hurry! Confound you! Hurry! We'll be swamped! 
For heaven's sake, Wyatt, you'll never make it. Wyatt, watch out. Come back, you fool, come back. I've got to close it. Come back. Racing, where are you going? Wyatt. Wyatt, he's out there. He took the box. Good heavens, he's done for. No, it's too late to help him now. I'm afraid we're going to have to abandon ship. She's breaking. The starboard light for it, eh? Make for it. Yes, but Mrs. Wyatt, she's below. She'll be killed. I'll get her first. The starboard boat, Edgar. The starboard boat. Mrs. Wyatt, to the boats. Mrs. Wyatt, we're sinking. Come on. Where is he? Where is he? Hurry, hurry, this way. Run! No, wait, please. Please, please, listen. In the name of heaven, woman, come on, quick. No time to lose. Good Lord. Mrs. Wyatt. Mrs. Wyatt! <coughs> then suddenly she disappeared before me. Water gushed down the passageway. She was swallowed by it. I struggled forward and made my way to the starboard boat. I jumped for the swinging davit and lowered myself as speedily as possible into the long boat. Captain Hardy joined me with three others of his crew. And then, just as we pushed out from the trembling mass of wreckage, I saw it. Hardy did, too. Standing to aft. I saw Wyatt. He was binding himself tightly to the... to the oblong box. He stood there for a moment. I thought, laughing, that in one brief instant he was gone with the ship. Into the sea. And, um, that's... Uh, that's all? Yes. I see. Uh, would you gentlemen be so kind as to follow me? This should prove rather interesting. This way, gentlemen. Uh, Captain, uh, when uh, when did you find this uh, this box? Yesterday afternoon. Um, in here, please. Uh, Mr. Allen, hand me that lantern and watch the stairs, please. They're rather sharp here. Lead on. Now, ordinarily, we would not have bothered with a floating body. It's generally some poor wretch from a wrecked vessel. However, due to the box and the peculiar circumstances, I thought it best to hoist it on board. Yes, but, but the decomposition... Oh, the salt water helped preserve them for a while... I thought we could reach New London safely with them. However, since we were blown off our course by that wind, it'll be a good day and a half before we reach land. I'm afraid I shall have to commit them both back to the sea. Uh, Mr. Allen, swing that door open, please, will you? Over there, in that corner. Yes. Yes, that's the box. Captain Hardy, would you kindly hold the lantern while I lift this blanket? Mm, certainly. Is this the man you call Wyatt? Poor devil. Hardly recognizable. Yes, that's Wyatt. And now, Mr. Allen, if you would give me a hand with the top of this box. It had been firmly nailed. However, we pried it loose when we took it aboard. Just pull at that end carefully. Good heavens. Even after two days at sea, death did not destroy that waxen beauty. It's almost impossible. Still so beautiful. You notice uh, the wound over the heart? Yes. Mr. Allen, that was the beauty Mr. Wyatt talked of. Why, of course... This must have been his wife. But... But wait, the other Mrs. Wyatt. Oh, yes, of course. I knew I'd seen her somewhere before. The maid. 
their personal maid. Yes, now I remember. She tried to tell me something before she... She drowned. Wyatt murdered his real wife. If only we had done something sooner. Murdered his wife? How could he? Why? Insanely jealous. Terribly jealous. To die with her would be better than to live with her and her beauty. He planned to murder her on that trip when I saw them stowing that box. Remember the groans? She was murdered that night. The blood, it was fresh. Remember the tapping we heard as he nailed her in this coffin. I... Hardly, I... I think we'd better leave. Yes. Yes, Wyatt. Your wife is very, very beautiful. Bell. 